Okay guys, so I was making my lunch. It's just sausages with ketchup and I'm gonna add pickles and have some yogurt. But when I opened the ketchup bottle, it sprayed all over me and on the counter. And then when I went to go throw it away, it sprayed all over the floor mat. So, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's been one of those days is my day to sleep in until 6.45. Yes, that is sleeping in for me right now. And my son woke me up like one o'clock in the morning and stayed up late so I'm exhausted on my sleep in day. Oh my gosh, I went real red. Um, and now I have ketchup. That's probably why I went red because my face and everything wants to match the ketchup on my clothes. So I'll be changing clothes, eat lunch, and then I'm going to do the project that I wanted to do when the kids were sleeping. So I'll see you all then. Okay, so lunch is over and I changed my pajamas, which I don't know if you all remember back from my pregnancy videos, but I got these pajamas that are nursing and pregnancy ones um, off of Amazon. And I had that dark blue one and then I have a black one. And so, that's what I'm wearing right now because I'm not going anywhere today and just wanted to have a chill out today. So my project now while the kids are sleeping is to clean this right here. So this is an old brush set that I got from my grandmother. It's got real horse hair and it's real silver, hollow, but still real. And so I'm going to clean it with this. And I've had this for probably about 15 years and it's probably got like right here now. So I don't have much silver and I don't clean it that often. So this doesn't expire so it lasts really well and works really well. So I'm going to be cleaning this. This was for um, brushing a man's vest to get lint off of. And I think this was like for brushing shoulder pads. And of course these are actual hair brushes and a mirror. So gonna clean this with the silver polish and just a rag and then I'll take a wet rag and wipe it down and dry it so that's what we're gonna do right now all right y'all so I didn't get to say it earlier because I was talking to my camera, but welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. And that Wellman's cleaning polish, I think is actually like seven years old because I do remember taking one from my mother's house when I moved out, which was more than 15 years ago. But I think this one is seven years because I went and bought some. Anyways, really not that important. It does last a very long time. So if you are looking for a good polish, this is the one that I recommend. And what I'm doing here is I'm just spreading it on all of the silver and I'm going to let it sit and kind of do its work. When it's really oxidated like this, it's best to just let your polish do its work by letting it sit there for a little bit. polishing metals, whether it be silver, copper, brass, anything like that. I absolutely love it. 
because it's almost like instant gratification. You do a little bit of polish, a little bit of scrubbing with a rag, and then it sparkles. And well, I like sparkly things, and so it really is one of my most favorite things to do. But don't clean your metals too often because if they're plated like this set here, it will eventually start to erode the metal away and the material it's plated on top of, which I think this is actually like kind of a plastic, will show through. Now I'm going to wipe everything down with a wet rag and then buff it dry. And I didn't actually show myself doing that because I did not realize that the camera angle where I was filming this didn't catch the mass majority of it because I was buffing them dry and cleaning them with a wet rag close to my face and the camera wasn't recording there at all. So I just did the little mirror for you. So a lady was giving away her chair and a half. So we went to go get it and we had to take all of the car seats out in order for it to fit. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to do a rough vacuum down and get all of the grass and little bits of dirt out of my car and then look forward to a very, very deep clean of that chair and a half.
Okay guys, so here is one of my tricks that I do for cushions, pillows, etc. because it's really hard to wash odd shaped things in a washing machine. So I fill a bathtub with steaming water, soak it with vinegar, and I will soak these pillows overnight and then put them outside to dry. While I'm waiting for the pillows to get fully soaked in the water, I'm gonna go ahead and clean. And while I do that, I'm gonna tell you guys my birth story. So please sit back and, well, just listen. If you don't wanna listen, you guys can mute me. All right, so I wanna start this off by saying that I had planned to have my daughter at home. I didn't want to have her in the hospital at a birth center or anything like that because this is 2020 when she is born and in the middle of covid and people still not really knowing too much about the virus so we got a midwife who does actually specialize in at-home births completely prepared for my daughter to come so at 9 a.m. I started getting Brixton Higgs contractions, which are actually false contractions. And I've had these before for actually 12 hours. And I was hoping that it would lead into labor, but my last time of having them, it did not. I just had 12 hours of minor contractions, probably at like a two on the zero to 10 scale. And I was kind of thinking it would go that way so I actually told my husband and he took my son and mother-in-law and they went grocery shopping everything was going perfectly fine and there was absolutely no change in my Bricks and Higgs contractions then at 3 30 I went from those tiny little contractions to actual true contractions and so that jumped up to about a five and I got a hold of my midwife told her you know been having the false contractions all morning and now it's led into real ones so she said to call her whenever I wanted her to come over and she would you know obviously come over <laughs> so the reason why she didn't rush over at that exact moment was a I've had a kid before so I know the difference between having contractions and actually being in labor and with my son it took five hours so we were kind of expecting an evening birth and I was actually praying for a nighttime birth because I didn't actually want Kaden to hear me <laughs> having a baby I also was not keeping track of like how long in between the contractions and how long they were lasting because with my son my contractions were about 15 minutes apart and only 30 seconds long when I actually went into labor and gave birth so to tell you guys how unusual that it is most women's contractions are about two to five minutes apart and they are a minute to a minute and 30 seconds long before they go into labor so i just didn't even pay attention to keeping track at this point So at around four o'clock, I actually came here into our bedroom and then moved into our bathroom here about 4.15 because my contractions actually started getting more intense and they went up to probably about a eight from, from a five to an eight. And I just didn't really want to have Kaden asking mommy what was wrong all the time. So I just went ahead and moved into my room and expected to actually hang out in my room for a few hours. I actually even had my phone and I was setting up a game to play on it for a couple hours. Like that is really where my mind was at is just hang out in your room kind of by yourself for a few hours. My husband was coming in and out 
to check on me, but he was also trying to make dinner and kind of keep Caden out of the room because he was curious about why mommy wasn't hanging out with him anymore. So then actually at 4.30, I went from contractions into active labor. And for y'all who have no knowledge of how this actually works is the contractions is pretty much the body getting ready for labor and they are different. And so the contractions that happen while you're in labor and not in labor are actually different. They feel different in the pressure that goes on between your hips. So at 4.30, I went into active labor, which still wasn't too worried, even though I'd only been having real true contractions for about an hour because I was in active labor with my son for three hours. But I went ahead and texted my midwife, or actually I called her and said, hey, you know, come on over. So she did, she jumped in her car right away, already had everything packed up in her car, ready to come and headed all over. So now at this point, I had actually moved into my bathroom and was laying on that bath mat right in front of my bathtub. And my husband was asking if he should get the water ready in the bathtub. And I told him no, cause I don't know what temperature it's supposed to be at. We don't have a thermometer. And our plan was actually to have a water birth. We had actually planned to have my son in a water birth, but we had him at a birthing center and we did not get to the birthing center in time to have a water birth. But I was still hoping and expecting to, since we were having my daughter at home, to be able to have a water birth in that big old bathtub. And that was the plan, you know, cause I've heard all these wonderful things about how nice water births are. So anyways, at literally five o'clock, my water broke. And in my head, I was like, well, there goes the water birth because that's not happening. Now my water has broken. And I told my husband, call the midwife, let her know that my water's broken. Again, I'm still not too worried about it because when my water broke with my son, which actually, <laughs> FYI, I was on the toilet, so it didn't make a big mess. Um, but when my water broke with my son, it was actually at the beginning of my labor. And so that was three hours later that he was born. So I wasn't a hundred percent worried about like my daughter just popping out. I was expecting, I probably had 30 minutes to an hour of her traveling through the birth canal. Now, at this point in time, my husband was actually running back and forth between me and me screaming whenever I have a labor contraction and our bedroom door because, well, my son was trying to basically <laughs> climb over my mother-in-law to find out what was wrong with mommy. So he would come in, check on me, run, keep Caden out, back and forth, back and forth. And on top of that, he, you know, grabs my phone and calls my midwife to let her know that my water has broken. Now I'm sure many of you have seen on television how men tend to lose their mind and the women maintain theirs when the baby is coming. And for us, that's kind of a realistic thing. Now my husband doesn't go super crazy. But so he calls my midwife and she answers the phone and it is 5.05 at this point. And so my husband, you know, has the phone in front of my face and, you know, I'm like, my water's broken and I'm crowning. So what crowning means is actually the baby is right at the surface and part of the head is actually already coming out. So my midwife goes, I'm at the front door and my husband's response to this is, what do I do? Now, under normal circumstances where he's not stressing about his wife in labor and a baby coming, he would know exactly what to do. But me and my midwife both at the same time said, let her in. So he runs to the door, 
lets her in and she comes in and my daughter is born at 507. So yes, I basically did the whole process by myself because even though my husband was home, he did have to, you know, run back and forth and try to keep my son out of the room. And my midwife, although she was traveling 80 down the highway, basically arrived just in time to catch my daughter. So that is my crazy birth story. I know it's not like having a baby in the Chick-fil-A bathroom, but I did have a baby in an hour and a half. And after my water broke, she did travel through my birth canal in about five minutes to where I really didn't even feel the pain that comes along with that process that much. I basically pushed like three or four times and she was out. After that, you know, we let my son in and so he's sitting next to me while I'm holding my newborn daughter and going, you know, baby, baby, baby sister, May May, which is Taiwanese for baby sister and, you know, kind of just dumbfounded as well. Like, where did this child come from? But at the same time, since he was home and awake, he was able to kind of figure out the process that mommy went into the bedroom with a really big tummy and now mommy has a smaller tummy and there's a baby sitting on top of it instead of on the inside. But yes, so that's my story and the day she happened to be born was actually the day that my extended family was having Christmas at my sister's house and so <laughs> I was able to call my family and we actually video chatted and so everybody got to see her when she was only a few hours old and it was really wonderful and just a beautiful Christmas gift and it was a beautiful gift that she came that quickly as well.
Okay, so here is the final product. We've got it in this corner in our room. And I do want to say that this cushion took about two weeks to dry out in the Texas sun. So if you live in a humid or cold area, don't soak that cushion all the way through. Just clean the cover. But I knew that I've soaked cushions and done that multiple times. So I knew it would eventually dry and be fine. And then in about a year, maybe two, when we don't need the recliner in this place here in our family room for me with Aloria being a baby, we're gonna put the chair and a half here and move this recliner into our bedroom. And so that's the plan for a year to two years from now. So I really like this. We will have it um, reupholstered and then you can see here this has been worn out just by the people putting their elbows and stuff on it. So I'll have it restuffed as well and moved, like I said, into the family room. That way, me and both the kids can easily sit in this chair because I have a feeling that's what's gonna happen. So. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, my birth story. Like and subscribe and check me out on Patreon if you want to. I will see you guys next time. Bye.